Hello guys, I'm Dr. Apurva Popat. I'm one of the internal medicine resident in the United States. So we'll be talking about USMLE versus PLAB, which is also called as now UKMLA. So USMLE, that's United States Medical Licensing Exam. So basically, if you want to pursue your post-graduation training in US, you have to appear for USMLE. In contrast to PLAB, which is, which is now UKMLA, so PLAB stands for Professional and Linguistic Assessments Board. And UKMLA, which is now the other name of PLAB, is uh, United Kingdom Medical Licensing Assessment Exam. So that's an exam if you want to pursue your medical career in UK that doesn't necessarily give you residency, but that's a first entry point. So you have to give PLAB exam to get into UK health system and then eventually MRCP if you want to pursue residency in UK. So let's compare and contrast. Let's first talk about eligibility. So for USMLE, you just have to be in med school or a medical school graduate. So if you just pass your second year of med school, you are still eligible for USMLE step one. And then if you pass your final year, you are eligible for USMLE step two. The only thing is your medical school should meet the ECFMG requirements and should be a part of WDOMS, that's World Directory of Medical Schools. So if you meet those criteria, if you are in med school or a graduate, you have medical school which is accredited by ECFMG and is present in WDOMS, you are eligible for USMLE exams. Other way around for PLAB, you have to be a graduate. Like for example, not for UK local students, but if you're an international student, you have to have a MBBS degree or an equivalent. So you have to be a medical graduate. You have to take English uh, proficiency exams, either ILTS or OET. So once you have these, then you can apply for PLAB 1 uh, after EPIC verification from the ECFMG website. So those are little eligibility criteria. So if you wanna start off early, let's say you, you wanna try some international exams while you are in med school, USMLE is something you can go for it. But if you want to apply for UK, you have to wait for your entire med school. You have to wait until you graduate and then appear for PLAB exams, okay? Now let's talk about exam structures. That's the second one. So USMLE, USMLE is divided into three-step exams. And if you want to have more detail about USMLE, please check other videos in my channel. So USMLE is divided into three step exam. USMLE step one, which is basic science, which covers mostly first and second year of your med school. That's eight hour long exam with one hour of break. And that's usually MCQ based exam. USMLE step two CK, that's more of a clinical knowledge. And that's, that's comprising of subjects of third year and final year and that's also MCQ based examination. Both of these exams you can take in any prometric center in your home country. And then uh, step three, that's divided into two days. Day one is basic science and day two is, you know, again, application of clinical sciences, which you can only take in United States. So those are three step you know, exam for USMLE. The day two of the step three exam also has a component which is called a CCS exams. Those are computer-based clinical simulation scenarios, which kind of real-time patient experience. Uh, so that's a you know a, another great exam as well. In contrast to PLAB exams, PLAB is divided into two: PLAB one and PLAB two. PLAB one is usually 180 MCQs. In in contrast to USMLE, PLAB one is directly based on clinical sciences, not the basic sciences only. So PLAB1 is clinical medicine, 180 MCQs. And then after you give your PLAB1, you are eligible for PLAB2 exam, which is only conducted in UK. And that's basically OSCEs. Those are objective structured clinical examination scenarios, usually 16 to 18. So after you give PLAB1 and PLAB2, then you are eligible for final license and then apply for internship in UK. Okay, now let's talk about third thing, that's pathways. So for USMLE, you, you have to give your step one exam, you have to give your step two exam and OET. After you give these three exams, you are eligible for ECFMG certificate. It's very important to have ECFMG certificate when you apply, uh, not mandatory, but it boosts your you know CV and application. And then uh, it's optional to take uh, step three before your residency. If you take step three and you are visa requiring, you are eligible for H-1B visa. 
and if you don't take step three and you still require visa you get j1 visa okay now let's talk about the pathways for plab exams so plab exam first of all you have to have an mbbs degree okay and then after that you have to give english proficiency exam um, either ielts or oet and then you have to make sure you have epic verification in ecfmg website then you have to give plab one in your home country then you have to give plab two you have to travel to us and give oski examination for plab two and then after giving plab one and plab two you have to apply for something called as general medical council license that's gmc license so you you apply for gmc license and then once you have gmc license you then you apply for foundational year courses or just foundational year rotations or training okay that's basically similar to intern year now if you want to pursue residency you have to apply and appear for another exam which is slightly more tough than just plab exam which is called as mrcp that stands for membership of royal college of physicians so once you give your mrcp then you are eligible for specialty training and then depending on what specialty you go you are eligible to do a residency ranging from three to six years and then after you do your residency then you are eligible to work as a consultant in uk okay so if you just have a comparison right now uk is slightly more a longer process especially you do if you do mbbs from your home country that's slightly a little long process than usmle the good thing is it might be a little more affordable and have less pressure as compared to usmle exams okay next one let's talk about attempts and scoring so usmle has three attempts for example let's say you take usmle step one or usmle step two usually you can give three attempts if you fail that exams whereas plab exams you don't have any attempts restriction you can take multiple attempts a score really doesn't matter as long as you appear for plab one plab two get your license and work as an intern year that's all that matters the most the important thing for usmle the scores are very important apart from your holistic application your cv your personal statement your interview taking skills your networking research experience a lot of things are at stakes in usmle exams next one is cost so for usmle exam it's thousand dollars each for one you know step one step two and step three exams so around three thousand dollars for three exam and then you count five hundred dollars for oet exam and something for ecfmg certificate so it falls around thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars for usmle exams in contrast to plab pleb 1 and pleb 2 combined will be around 1300 pounds and then you have to add oet and getting a gmc license so it falls around maybe around 1500 to 2000 pounds if you apply for pleb exam in addition to other costs then after you give your pleb or you assembly what's the salary that's the next thing so as a resident you may get paid around 60 to 70 thousand dollars a year after you give your pleb exams your salary could be around 33 to 35 thousand pounds let's talk about visa after you give your usmle exam you can get either j1 or h1 visa if you take your step 3 you are eligible for h1 visa and if program sponsors you you may get uh, h1b visa whereas for pleb you you get something called as tier 2 visas for pleb so in summary if you just you know combine both usmle and pleb i would say usmle is a bit more expensive a lot of is at stakes for USMLE exam. You have to have a holistic all round application for USMLE. Uh, but the time duration is a little bit shorter as compared to UK. Uh, UK is kind of more affordable. You would have less pressure as compared to USMLE, but you may get paid less after you finish your residency or fellowship as compared to USMLE where you get paid more. So those are the finer differences between USMLE and PLAB exams. It's also important to keep in mind that you should sit down and write you know, pros and cons of each exams. You have to make sure that you, you know, do your thorough personal research. You may take advice from everyone, but ultimately you should take your own decision where you want to pursue your career as. And of course, there'll be other factors which will be responsible, whether you have your family, your siblings, anyone living in other countries, you know, which may be an anchoring point 
uh, to where you want to ultimately pursue your medicine okay so if you have any other questions please comment um, in the comment section below please make sure you like and subscribe the channel if you like the videos and uh, you can also check out my instagram page we'll put a link below here in the description as well as you can you can type uh, dr apurva underscore popat in instagram and dm me if you have any other questions okay take care